details have emerged of how Nnamdi Kanu, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, was rearrested by the Nigerian government. A source prevailed to the illegal abduction of the IPOB leader has revealed to Sahara reporters how Kanu was adopted in Kenya and brought to Lagos. Nigerians Anthony General and the Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami San on Tuesday, June 29, 2021, confirmed that Kano had been rearrested. At a joint press briefing with the State Security Service, SSS, also known as the Department of State Services, DSS, in Abuja, Malami said Kano was rearrested and returned to Nigeria on Sunday, June 27. He did not, however, give details of where Kano was rearrested and the diplomatic collaborations that may have been involved in the operation. According to him, the IPOB leader was arrested through collaborative efforts of Nigerian intelligence and security service. Kano, who is being prosecuted on charges of treasonable felony, was thereafter arranged at the Federal High Court in Abuja. It was his first court appearance since he flew to Nigeria in September 2017 after an invention of his home by the military in Afaruku near Umoya in Abia State. Kano had arrived in Kenya and settled down in the house on June 19, 2021. He drove himself in a car to the international airport to meet a person arriving in the country for a high-level IPOB meeting. He drove into the underground parking underground parking lot at the airport and was arrested before exiting the car. He was taken to a house and brutalized for eight days. Why the Nigerian authorities perfected how to forcefully locate him to Nigeria? He was traveling on a British passport, not a Nigerian passport as alleged by Malami. He was brought into Nigeria on a Saturday and arranged on Monday. Bwari, upon learning of his abduction, decided to cancel his trip to the UK to manage the diplomatic fallout at home instead of going to London. Kano was interrogated in the presence of his lawyers in DSS office in Abuja. The Nigerian government did not get his passport, laptop, and three major phones. He was taken out of Kenya without passing through immigration. There has been reports that Interpol was involved in Kano's arrest, but the top dismissed, dismissed that saying Interpol was not involved. UK newspaper The Guardian had reported that Kano got a Kenya visa which was to expire in June, and he had been around in the country before sudden arrest and extradition. Evidence seen by the Guardian shows that Kano entered Kenya this year on his British passport on a visa expiring in June. His UK passport remains in Kenya. Kano was not in possession of a Nigerian passport, his family said, and he has verbally renounced his Nigerian citizenship in broadcasts. The abduction of a person from a foreign country with the aim of redemption to justice is illegal under international law, the UK newspaper report says. Hmm. Nigerians have, you know, started to react to this. This confirms the words of our Yoruba elder. What small Nigerian government has broken an international law on repatriation of a person? They should now release Namdekano without delay. Why they start their hunting afresh? Bori and Marzin Namdekano should be a, ma a matter of clarity appear before open court to prove to us that they are still alive. I am still confused who was buried in Saudi Arabia was rumored. I went through all these news about the kidnap of an emir and 13 members of his family. I did not see any comment from Northerners. Now, look at all of them jumping like lambs because a southerner was mentioned. Not na hypocrisy. They kill him. They kill them, he said. Buari attempted to secretly kidnap and transport Umaru, 
Duco in a diplomatic bag from United Kingdom in 1984. Though the kidnap by Buhari in 1984 was unsuccessful, after the kidnap was foiled, the political fallout seriously damaged relationship between Nigeria and the United Kingdom. For years, similar thing is about to repeat again. They tried in 2015. Today, Mazin Nandikano and Biafra have been preached to the whole world. This time around, they will give Biafra at the end. It does not matter what happened. Long life, Biafra, long life members of IPOB. Long life, Mazin Namdekano. He jumped bay in Nigeria. He was declared wanted and eventually arrested. He should answer to his deeds. If he is cleared by the courts, he will go. But he should note that those innocent youth who he incited to their dead will not forgive him. I want the Nigerian government to raise the issue of his procasts, brokers, brokers about the death of Buhari, so that we will confirm if it is true or not. Why is presidency keeping quiet about the issue? I think it's time to confirm to us if it's lie or whatever, engaging each other in live television in order to prove to us if it's lie or true. Okay, someone said, a terrorist can be captured, killed, kidnapped anywhere to face justice at home anytime. Having a British passport is not is not a hair stick for him to be creating problem everywhere and then. Alright, someone said the Mazin Namdekano must face the law because he has killed so many Igbo youths in the southeastern part of this country. Whether Namdekano was kidnapped or arrested, the fact is that he has been arrested and he have to face the law. All right, someone said, yeah, let's see how it goes. If Nigerian government and Kenya government will go free on it. So guys, we've all heard it now. These are Nigerians reacting. I'm going to drop it here. Hit the comment section. And don't forget to give us thumbs up. Also, subscribe to this channel if you have not. Thank you very much. Bye for now.